I know we all want to pay less in taxes. Today we are going to talk about is passive income taxed at a lower rate? All right, is passive income taxed at a lower rate? Let's first talk about what exactly is passive income. Passive income is any money earned without active involvement. This can include things like rental income, dividends, interest, royalties, and capital gains. In other words, it's money you are not actively working for. Now let's answer the question that is on everyone's mind. Is this passive income taxed at a lower rate? Are we going to be able to pay a lower amount in taxes if we make passive income? And the answer is, it depends. Let's go over these different types of passive income and talk about how they are taxed. All right, the first one I wanna talk about because I really like this one is rental income. Rental income is actually taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. That means the amount of taxes you're going to pay on your rental income depends on how much money you've made in total over the year. But it doesn't mean that rental income is bad because there are deductions you can take on your taxes if you have rental properties, if you are creating that rental income. That is one of the reasons that I invest in in real estate. I like having those deductions that I can take on my taxes every single year because of the properties that I own. For example, if you are buying a new appliance for one of your properties, you can deduct that, you can depreciate it over the years. So even though you had to pay the full amount for that certain appliance, it is giving you a tax break. I think two years ago, I purchased a new air conditioner unit for one of my rental properties and it was not cheap. So if you own multiple properties and you have multiple appliances that you are buying in all of those properties, that's going to be a significant amount you can write off over time. And I do realize with rental income, this is not completely passive income. It's more semi-passive. It can be more passive if you have a property manager for your rental properties. But if you are managing it yourself, of course it is going to take some work but it is not 100% active work. I'm not working 40 hours every single week like I would with a nine to five job. And yes, sometimes the hours are pretty late, depending on if you have a leak in your water heater pretty late at night and your tenant calls you about it, but that's not happening all of the time. So it can be a pretty passive way to make extra money. And then the second type of passive income I want to talk about is dividends. Dividends can come from individual stocks or even index funds. Some companies pay out dividends quarterly and you can make that money passively if you are investing in those funds or in those companies. And qualified dividends are taxed at a lower rate than your ordinary income tax rate. For 2023, the rates are 0%. 15% or 20% depending on the amount you are receiving in dividends or even capital gains. Non-qualified dividends, on the other hand, are taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. And honestly, a lot of the US companies are qualified dividends. You also have to hold the dividend for a certain time period, but if you are a long-term investor, you are definitely going to qualify for that hold period and that way you can pay less in taxes. Comment below and tell me if you have any dividend stocks in your investment accounts. I do have some individual stocks that pay dividends, so I do collect dividends every quarter usually, but I reinvest those dividends, so I'm not taking out that cash right now. So honestly, if you have enough qualified dividends, if you have enough money invested, and you are collecting quite a bit of money from just those dividends, and they are qualified, you can end up paying that 0% in your federal taxes. While you may think, oh, it's not that much money right now, if you continue to invest in those stocks or even in those dividend paying funds over the long term, that is really going to build up and create quite a bit of money for you. Once you do quit your nine to five and you have those dividends available, then you could start living off of those dividends and have that 0% federal income tax rate. And then the third type of passive income is interest. So is interest tax at a lower tax rate? It is not. It is taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. The interest you are earning in your savings account or on your CDs is going to be taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. For example, I do have my emergency fund in Ally they pay a 3.4% interest rate on their savings account right now. Since I have a larger amount of money sitting in that account, I am making money every single month from that account. 
So they are going to send me a tax form and I'm going to have to claim that on my taxes as ordinary income. And just as a side note, if you do not have your emergency fund sitting in a high yield interest savings account, I would definitely move your emergency fund to one of those accounts so that you can create some passive income from your emergency fund, even though you are going to have to pay taxes on it. And there are a lot of high yield interest savings accounts out there. I just choose Ally, but of course you can go with any one you want to. The fourth type of passive income I want to talk about now is royalties. Royalties are earned income that come from licensing intellectual property, such as patents, copyrights, and trademarks. An example of this would be a book. And speaking of books, my new book is out. It's called You Will Be Financially Free. I'm super excited about it. I will leave a link to the book below in the description. You can click on that and get your very own copy. And when you do that, I will be collecting royalties from that book. So I will be paying ordinary taxes on the royalties. And then passive income number five is capital gains. There are two types of capital gains. There are long-term capital gains and short-term capital gains. And lucky for us, long-term investors, since we are holding our investments for the long-term, we can pay long-term capital gains tax rate, which is lower than our ordinary tax rate. Like I mentioned before, with dividends for 2023, the tax rates are 0%, 15% and 20%, depending on your income level. Short-term capital gains are taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. For example, if you are holding your investments for less than a year, you're going to pay short-term capital gains tax rate. One reason you want to hold your investments for a year or longer is so that you can pay less in taxes. You can pay that long-term capital gains tax rate. I've actually paid both short-term and long-term capital gains tax rate. When I first started investing and I was buying individual stocks and I wasn't focused so much on the long-term, I didn't have my full strategy in place yet. I invested a big chunk of money in Netflix actually and I held it for maybe 30 days or so, and I ended up cashing out some of that. I kept some in, but I cashed some of that out because I was really nervous, and I decided to cash out at a certain amount, and I felt good about cashing that out, and since I didn't cash it all out, I still felt good about leaving some of it in there, but I made a significant amount off of Netflix, but I also paid that short-term capital gains tax rate. I've since become a more long-term investor and I am glad that I did that. So I've had money in a brokerage account for quite a while and when I was purchasing my fourth property, I was able to pull money out of my brokerage account and since I had it in there over a year, I was able to pay long-term capital gains tax rate on that amount and then I was able to purchase my fourth property. So it made it nice that I was thinking ahead and decided to invest some of my money in a brokerage account where I could pull it out before age 59 and a half without a penalty, but still knowing that I would pay taxes. But I only paid that long-term capital gains tax rate that time because I had it invested over a year. And if you want more details about how I did that, I do have a video for you. I will leave a link above. Tell me in the comments what type of passive income you are going to make. If you are serious about creating passive income through the stock market, I have a free masterclass about that. I will leave a link to it below in the description. You can click on that and check out my free masterclass. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and share it with someone else who would like to hear this information and to the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to the little bell to get notified on when I post new videos. And if you want to see even more content from me, make sure and check out the videos on the side of the screen. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.